Today is holy. This means recognizing that essentially life is a very exuberant process. But because of human ex inexperience of how to deal with their cerebral capabilities, the most fundamental two faculties of memory and imagination. People remember everything that they should not and they forget everything that they should. And they imagine all kinds of things that they should not and they cannot imagine something that will make their life beautiful. So holy, if those of you who are not aware of this, on this day all over India, people throw colors at each other. They drench themselves in color. This is a day people are head to toe in all kinds of color to symbolize that the essence of life is exuberance and the reason why it's become so serious <laughs> is because we remember things that we should not and we imagine things that we should not. So holy also means burning up all unnecessary things in our life. On this day, people bring out all old clothes and neighborhood children's toys. <laughs> That's enterprise <laughs> All kinds of things that they don't need, they pile it up on the street and burn it. This is not about burning old clothes. This is about burning the memories of the past one year so that today you can be like a fresh life, exuberant on. So this is that day and all of you are looking at me very seriously <laughs> <laughs> This is the time in India, this is the late spring when the second slew of blossoms should happen. But unfortunately this year has been such a bad drought, the mountains are looking brown for the first time in the last six to seven years. They were looking brown twenty-five years ago and we planted up this hill. But in the last six, seven, eight years, it's never looked brown, it's always been green. This year it's turned brown because there has been no rain for almost five months now. But uh, especially if the plants are not able to flower, the human being should assist. Hello? Plants are not able to flower due to lack of nourishment. You don't look undernourished. <laughs> you must make it up because plants are not able to flower because of the drought. You must make it up with your smiles and your joy and your exuberance because uh, when nature fails, man is supposed to stand up. Hello? <laughs> the problem with a whole lot of people is they're constantly giving themselves a lecture. Hmm? A lecture. Sitting in the satsang, not always are they listening to me, they're running a parallel lecture program. any time of the day or night. 
It happened one night, Shankaran Pillai was walking home <laughs> he was going home. 2 a.m., two o'clock in the morning and he was not able to hold a straight line because the damn planet is round, how to hold a straight line? So he was little wobbling around a bit. The policeman who was on the night beat stopped him and said, Hey, you are not steady on your feet. Where do you think you're going at this time of the day? Shankaran Pillai said, I'm going for a lecture. <laughs> the policeman asked, Come on, two o'clock in the morning, who is giving a lecture? Shankaran Pillai said, you don't know my wife <laughs> It doesn't matter what time I get back, I get a lecture <laughs> And many of you don't have a wife or a husband, but you are on a lecture tour all the time. <laughs> Self-help, this is called. Just to stop this, <clears throat> preoccupation with your own rubbish endlessly, most people think it's impossible. This is because they have not stopped identifying with their thought. They, once you identify with it, you can't stop it. There is no need to stop it, you just have to disidentify with it because the content of your thought filled in from outside, isn't it? Hmm? The content of your thought is not yours, borrowed. If you just say, this is not mine, that's all you have to do. You don't have to give it up. If you just see, what's happening in my head is not really mine, then you will see it'll buzz around for some time and You identify with it so much, it is yours and you think it's a smart thought, though it's stupid. Everybody thinks it's stupid, but you think it's smart. Doesn't matter, it messes up your life, but still you think it's smart. It doesn't let you sit down in one place, if not in ecstasy, at least peacefully, but you still think it's smart. If you do not know even how to be at ease, that's not smart, isn't it? Hello? Yes. You don't even know how to be at ease, how can you call this smart? Nothing smart about it, it's the dumbest way to exist. But because you are so invested in it, you can't drop it. Today is holy. Time to burn up the old and especially because spring is not manifest due to lack of rains, you must. I'm going to watch you for next three days in the ashram premises. I want to see how you are. Different levels of aliveness, isn't it? Yes. Different levels of aliveness <laughs> Springtime, holy, we want you to sit with maximum aliveness. Hello? Yes! <laughs> I didn't say it have to be noisy <laughs> Maximum aliveness. Flowers are missing this year. You have to make it up because that's the only goddamn thing you have, aliveness. Everything else is your rubbish in your head. Yes or no? That is the only thing you have, rest is all your rubbish. That you must keep it full on, no? No, I'm saving it Sadhguru. 
because uh, I've already built a steel coffin, I'll be there for a long time, I have to have something left. <laughs> this happened. This really happened. Again at 2 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> the public prosecutor called the judge, the butler in the house said, I can't wake him up, it's two o'clock in the morning. He said, no, this is very urgent, you have to. Then he connected. This telephone rang in the bedroom and the judge picked up and said, who is this? Mr. Justice, Justice Grover just passed away and I would like to take his place. <laughs> so the judge said, well, I got no objection if the undertaker doesn't mind. You want to act like you're already half in? Hello? No flowers in the garden. You should make it up. I'm going to watch you for next three days, how spring blossoms, okay?